And with that said, let me introduce our guest for this evening. Mina Savari is an award-winning actor whose credits include American Beauty, American Pie, Six Feet Under, Chicago Fire, and American Horror Story, among many others. And she lives in Los Angeles. And this is not in her bio, but she is the author of tonight's book, which is why you're here. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and Zibby Owens, our guest in conversation guest tonight, is the host of award-winning podcast, Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books, and several other podcasts. She edited the anthology, Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books, a quarantine anthology, which you can purchase at the link that I will repost again. A Good Morning America contributor, Zibby also writes regularly for the Washington Post. And her next book is another anthology called Moms Don't Have Time to Have Kids. <laughs> and the proceeds, <laughs> the proceeds for her um, quarantine anthology go to COVID, COVID research. So keep that in mind. And without further ado, I'm going to turn that camera over to Mina and Zibby. Thank you both so much for being with BookSoup tonight. Everyone, please sit back, relax, and enjoy the presentation. Thank you. Hi. Hi. This is so fun. I want to make sure I say your name right because in the book you have it, when someone pronounces it too long, like Mina, and I was like, I don't oh, want to say it. That oh. was a terrible scene. So I'm gonna like <laughs> not pronounce it that way. I'm kidding. You'll never be that person. Okay. No. Um. Yeah. Mina Suvari. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. I'm kidding. I was... It's a very. It's a weird one. I technically have an umlaut over the U. So. Wow. Yeah. Haven't had a lot of umlauts in yeah. my life lately so it's I used to write my name with a, a line over the e when I huh. was younger because I was so upset by being called men all the time. oh interesting I felt like I'd prove my point if I wrote it that way <laughs> Um, so Mina, thank you for writing this beautiful memoir and sharing all of your life story I mean when people talk about putting your life on the page like that is what you did like check plus here it is bearing your soul going back into it and like i mean maybe there's a lot you didn't say but it feels as if a lot of it got into the book yeah well yes. i did write too much um because i i technically was writing in the wrong format i've never done what this do you mean? <laughs> well since we all are familiar with this here you, you probably know text edit right so i wasn't you know i i was in the wrong format so i was thinking that I had to, you know, write X amount of words or get to a particular place. And um, I just kept writing and writing and writing and um, it was too much. So we actually had to shape Interesting. some of it back. But, um, but no, I don't think um, maybe a, a few small things, but I, I think I really put out a lot of it. So a lot of people call that brave or they say things like that. Sometimes it comes from this place of needing to do it. You in the book said that you found all your old diaries and that sort of triggered you to want to mm -hmm. write your whole story now that you're at a very different place in your life. And then you also at the end talk about how Me Too is sort of of the moment and maybe this is your time. Mm -hmm. What was it? Why now? Why write it now? I mean, it was really of those things and more. I feel like it was definitely a process. It was really like a, a cocktail of so many things that went into the mix. Um, I feel like first and foremost, um, I had enough. I needed to talk. I needed to get that out. I needed to express myself. And um, I think what I try to communicate in the book is, is finding that voice. You know, um, for me, I think learning or coming to learn and believe that I always had one and finding it again. And so there was this um, very big need for me to talk. And um, so that's originally how this, you know, manifested or came out of me. Um, and you know, of course, finding my diary, I found a suicide note. I mean, all of these things really got me thinking. I realized how, um, and, you know, from looking back that my life only got worse after writing that note. And um, I also had a red binder that I had made back then, which I had entitled The Great Peace. And it was basically my poems and some short stories that I had like literally typed up on a typewriter. It's probably like almost 60 loose pages. And... Um, I thought, you know, I'll just publish that because uh, I felt like I was ready to make some kind of move, but maybe I felt like, oh, it's like safer in some way. 
And then, you know, just sitting down, um, I sat down with a, a friend and shared the binder with them. And then um, in, in doing so, I shared some of the stories around some of the poems because some of the poems I'd even, you know, time-stamped or like dedicated to a specific person. And, and so when I shared some of those stories, they really encouraged me to tell all of it and share it as a memoir and then incorporate some of the poetry in there. And so then I thought, okay, you know, I sat back with that and um, I guess I just didn't, I, I couldn't think about it too much. Um, I felt like it was just something that I, I just felt so compelled I needed to do this. And I know that that's weird. I never thought that I would write a book. I never thought that I was that kind of person. I never thought I had something to say or anyone would ever care. That's what so much of this book's about. Um, but here we are. I mean, I don't think it's weird. Like, I don't think it's weird. I think you, you... Well, I mean, I'm sort of like challenging all of that. I'm like breaking that mold. I am I was thinking about this earlier and it was like the way that I view it is because I, I try to touch upon spirituality, like what it means to me in my life, like how I live my life. And there's so much of this that just feels like I'm giving it back. Mm -hmm. It just feels like, thank you. You know, I've been sitting with this for so long and I don't need it anymore. It's not serving me and you can have it back. And now I want to do something with it, you know? So it's, it's, um, it's, it's just been like this incredible process because there's like so much more in addition that's come out of now promoting it and talking about it and, um, other people sharing with me. And so, Yeah. It's, it's a really beautiful thing. I'm very happy, and I'm more than honored to be that person. It's great. Um, I'm really struck, and I was time and again in your book, by your ability to compartmentalize, right? Mm. So you have, even what we're not even doing, when we were just chatting, like, are you nervous about this? And you're like, yeah. well, no, of course. You, can, you took so much of your life and just shoved it away and then projected a different facade, which I feel like so many women in particular can relate to, right? You just hide your stuff and you look okay to the outside and no one really knows the depths of pain or what you're going through. Mm. And not only could you do that, but you, you're acting, you could just become a totally different person and channel whatever you needed to. And I feel like you related so much to the characters. Like you had whole chapters about them. I feel mm. like you really like inhabited them and they meant something to you mm -hmm. like along the way. So tell me about that. Like how, when did that first, when did you first be able, use that as a coping mechanism or did you even notice? And mm. do you feel like it's, gotten any better now like do you feel like now especially that this has all come out that the walls have come down a little or do you think you're still good at sort of putting stuff away tucking it God, so many questions sorry um, sorry I, <laughs> yeah. that was a lot um, <laughs> I mean I, it definitely I think it's important to note that I mean this work isn't over for me for sure um and I'm not an expert it's not like I just like wrap this up and I'm like that's what I learned and here you go everyone and good luck um uh, I'm still doing the work. Um, I, I have always talked about how I feel that art saved my life because it gave me that, that outlet. Um, I, I don't believe I knew that at the time. I was very unaware. Um, I think I try to communicate that in the book of that process of um, awakening. Right. And the individuals that helped me see that Seagal and, um, you know, who, who talked to me or introduced me to therapy, things like this. Um, so I think a lot of it is sort of, I don't know, kind of being in the survival mode. Um, I, I don't think I could safely say that I was aware of the security, the, um, the importance that work gave to me at that, at that moment. Um, I think I try to bring that also into the, the, the book as well is just to show that with my spirituality, I feel that like there's always this constant communication. And so I was trying to touch upon that is that I feel like there was always something that kind of came in at the time where I needed it. 
And um, I view that very much as my work, a particular role that would come in and challenge me, or it was, because I try to always look for the opportunity. So that's how I see it. I, I feel like there was an opportunity given to me um, that like just got me by each moment. And so I guess in the book, I, I'm trying to isolate those moments. I'm trying to show how each one got me to the next step. Wow. So I could talk on all of those. Like they all meant something different, right? Um, each project, each character, each story, right? Depends on like what it was. and um, But for sure, I mean, I, I feel like there was always that gift of what um, professionally was going to come into my life. Interesting. Yeah. Um, can I read this one paragraph? Sure. It's towards the beginning, but it was so well written. You're a really good writer. I That's mean, so nice and I know, <laughs> no, I mean, you talk sort of offhandedly. I think my brother would call it like a humble brag or something like that, but you're oh, obviously what? like a oh. humble brag, you know, and oh. like you kind of like put something in, but like you're clearly like super smart, right? You did so well in school when you were focused and you could have been anything right you no but this a means doctor. a lot to me because I was not very I did not um I was wasn't received very well like in English class and, and well, writing and things like this so no, again you, that's why those doubts were always there I never thought I could you know well I'm gonna read this and together. we can just prove that you're a great writer <laughs> you said that's how it was deep down in the marrow of my bones where no one could get <clears throat> no matter how they ripped into my flesh I held on to my dreams and the hope I had for myself I looked for the beauty that was all around me, <clears throat> excuse me, compelled to see it, no matter how hard it was to find. I knew there was a glimmer of light that I could follow through the darkness. I never got the apologies I wanted from the people who hurt me, but I came to understand they were necessary for my well-being. I needed only one person's forgiveness. This is her story. Mm. That's powerful. That's really great. Thanks. Don't you think? I mean, oh, yeah. I don't, I don't, doesn't it sound cry. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, No, it's, it's very true. Yeah, it's it's... It's very true. Um, Do you feel like, um, I know writing has been a balm to you in this time, and you talked about your time in the library and reading and all of that. Like, is there any of this, you know, adding to the literature and, like, you know, how books have helped you? I feel like, you know, for me, like, books have always helped me so much. I want to, like, give back to thank all the books in a way. But mm -hmm. um, I feel like they, they serve that role for you, too, and... Oh, definitely, because I feel like it's all about communication. That's why we're here. Um, I'm very much about the spoken word and, I mean, language in and of itself and the power that it holds. Um, I have that tattoo, word sound power. You know, I'm very much about that. Um, so, for sure, I mean, I feel like there... In, I mean, I don't know. I believe that there there is power in sharing. I mean, that's just what I experienced. And and it's just simply that. I felt like I, I wanted to, um, I needed to do this for myself, but I also was so completely inspired by the way that, you know, everyone that I've experienced in my life has shared with me and been so fearless. Well, I feel like you had so many moments of trauma in your life that you didn't necessarily label as such, but mm. that were starting from the very beginning, starting with, you know, everything that happened with men. I mean, that could be, it could just be, you know, the abuse that you went through or getting over drugs or all these things that happened. But honestly, I was so taken, like the accident you had in, mm. on your retreat with getting thrown from the horse and thinking you were like never going to move again and having to be carried on a stretcher well, that's one out of, of the jungle. Just, I know it's one of like <laughs> yes. a trillion traumas, but that was, I think one of the more recent ones, right? I mean, that couldn't have been too. Well, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's what I mean about forgiveness is I feel like, I mean, this was something I was thinking about earlier and you know, it was like mystifying as for people, they didn't quite understand that. And I guess I viewed it as like, again, in relation to my most important, important uh, relationship I feel with the universe is that I feel like I got to this point where I just saw how I was the one who was consistently abusing myself in a way and holding myself back because I'd had so many moments like that I fell off a 30-foot cliff when I was eight yeah <laughs> and I didn't break a bone and so I was trying to communicate 
how there's been these moments where I felt so completely lost and so abandoned, but yet I never was because there was always something beautiful that was given to me. There's always like just enough, whether it was something personal, a, a friend or someone that I met or a professional work opportunity. There was always like a little gift that like just got me by. It gave me just enough to see that. And um, in the book, I talk about my second husband. I talk about how being able to work on American Horror Story mm -hmm. was like just another example of, you know, making me feel good enough about myself to take the next step. Um, yeah. So I feel like it's like you've done everything you could to destroy yourself. Right. Everything you could, and it's it's almost reading the book like a miracle that you're even like sitting here. You know, like I think I so tried. Many... I fought, and I tried to prove that no one cared about me. I think I put a lot of effort into trying to prove that uh, my existence didn't matter. That's how I saw it. And so, from macro, I just had too many of these moments where it was just. How did I come out of that alive? And that really put me in this place of like, what am I doing and why am I here? And, you know, how am I really appreciating and valuing my life? So those were those moments for me of like, I didn't die in Costa Rica, but yet I'm sitting here in what I referred to as my poopy diapers, feeling bad for myself and waiting maybe for an apology. And that's not, and it never got me anywhere. And so that's why it's like trying to communicate that moment of, you know, why now? Because I've been sitting with it my whole life. So what do you think it is? What do you think, what is like your whole, this is kind of a bigger question, but having gone through all this stuff, like why has the universe sort of like not let you succumb <laughs> to all the things that you've tried to do to yourself? I mean, like, why do you know. keep getting rescued? What is it about the, the universe and nature and spirituality? Why? What do you think? What is? I don't thing? know, and I'm trying to figure that out. And I feel like recently I was thinking on that because I'm ever the Aquarian and trying to understand <laughs> it. And I don't know. I was I was like feeling earlier coming here, how it's like really I wanted to use the word pumped, like I'm pumped right now. I'm ready to go. That's how I see it. And I appreciate people saying, you know, I'm so sorry that you experienced that. Um, that means a lot to me, but I'm not in that space anymore. Like now I'm ready to do the work. Now I'm ready to, I don't know, commit even more, stay committed and create the change that needs to come about. I mean, so that's exciting for me now. Well, you were like walking around with this like heavy cloak on mm -hmm. you and now you've like put it to the side finally. So you're like ready to, you yeah. Know, I, I totally get it. And That's so, exciting for me because um, I've been sitting with that for so long. Yeah. And how do you feel in terms of forgiveness? I mean, there was a lot of wrong done to you, hmm. not just that you, I know you, you say you like brought it on yourself at times, but it, it, it's not like that. Like it actually was just a lot of really bad stuff happened to you. Well, because I always try to find my place in it. I think that's important for me. You know, I, this isn't like the blame game. And I don't know. I've just never lived my life like that. Um, I always try to find my place in it. You know, what what I brought into it and I don't know what I can, how I can what, what additional work I need to do, right? I don't think it's so passive, but, um, but for sure, I mean, those are big conversations because a lot of the work is, is me trying to understand, I think, you know, what kind of keeps us in places for longer than we would have hoped to be in them, right? I loved the one moment where um, it was when you were still sort of living on the, the queen size mattress tucked in the corner with your stuff everywhere and this like horrific abusive relationship. And you, it was when you were sort of mandated into bringing a third person into your relationship, whoever it was at all these different times. And, and you tried to bring this one woman in and as she's getting out, she was like, Mina, it doesn't have to be like this. Yeah. It's my friend Tracy. I mean, that's like, it was such a moment. Like I could just see you there by the car and like her telling you that. And like you, first of all, you wrote it so well that obviously that's why I could see it. But like what a statement and that it resonated with you so much and you obviously like stored it away. I mean, I stored it away to the point where she doesn't even know about this book and, um, 
now we're talking about it and uh and she reached out to me so we're going to have a conversation because we never even talked about that moment she didn't even know how important of a person she was to me back then so I thought that was pretty incredible after all these years that's what I mean about like the additional healing the things that are coming out of this now which I never would have expected because I mean I didn't tell anybody about it because I'm not that person and I didn't think like oh I wrote a book you know get ready everyone like I just <laughs> it was something that I needed to do I needed to tell my story and that's just how it came about but you know so I'm learning how to embrace that it's sort of mystifying to me um, I got a few copies yesterday and I'm just sort of holding it like wow <laughs> you know <laughs> oh my gosh um, and it was also interesting how you wrote about fame and how it kind of happened to you and how you were so like in your own world that like movies would come out and you're like oh yeah and then that movie came out and then all of a sudden I was recognized and yet nobody would know what was going on secretly in you know behind the curtain and well, yet I was just trying to survive I, I just didn't and I don't try to share that in like an I don't know a negative way but it that just wasn't my main focus um to be completely honest I you know drew up plans to be an architect when you know on grid paper when I was young or I had my archaeological dig or I chose medical research as you know for career day I didn't necessarily think I would become an actor and particularly famous so it was very weird for me you know when all of that happened because I mean I'm still trying to figure out who I am because I think a lot of that happened at the point where and because of a lot of what was happening pers personally for me that never got to happen on its own I never got to develop that it was all of a sudden just given fame I was given this like identity over here and so I, I believe it wasn't like a healthy development of my own. So then there was like this disconnect of like, oh, wait a minute, if I'm this over here, I have to play into that because it doesn't equate with where I came from. That can't equate. This needs to, this shiny thing must have come from this past, right? So that's why I had to stay separate. Wow. I didn't think that that would be possible um I don't know maybe just that day and age I didn't think we walked around like that mm. of you know wearing our emotions and our hearts on our sleeves so yeah I disconnected and um I learned I went into survival mode yeah so I love that you're like pumped for the next phase <laughs> because honestly, no, you're so young. I mean, I think, I don't know how exactly old you are, but I'm 42. You, okay. <gasps> I feel ancient, I'm, but uh, thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm 44. But anyway, I feel, well, I, you're younger than me. So I'm going to say you're young and you just had a baby and that's so exciting. Um, but you could do anything. I mean, you could do anything you want now. What do you want? I think to, we like, all can do anything. Yes. That's a great statement. So we can. what's like, what do you want to do? Like you could be an architect now. You could go <laughs> do whatever you want. Like, I love wh that. what would you want to do? I'm going to call you when I need that. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Anytime. Advice. Um, I mean, I honestly uh, want to write more because, you know, I finished writing the great piece and I found out I was pregnant which was, you know, I mean, everything, absolute miracle, surprise. And um, I'm not surprised because of, I think, like how I've laid my life out and, you know, how it's been like chock full of challenges, how it's, how it's, uh, you know, gone down in, when reading the great piece that my birth would only end up like that. So I, I feel like uh, I need to talk about that. I need to talk about that space and postpartum because of the things that I experienced. I feel like in connection with the great piece, there's just a lot that we don't talk about, a lot that we don't address. And so I never thought that that would happen because I never thought that I'd even write one book. But now I feel like there's so much more that I want to talk about in that space. Perhaps the great chaos. Um, <laughs> this is like, parenting is like the anti-piece. 
It's like, you know, it's a great uh, disruption or something. I don't know. Yeah. No, I, I have already the title and like. Oh, you do? Oh, you're ready to go. And, yeah, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, you're like 10 steps ahead. I just, it just sort of happened. Amazing. Because of how it went down, I thought, oh, my gosh, well, I'm not surprised. And now I think I have to talk about this. I want to because I just feel like there were a lot of things that um, weren't addressed. In terms of like postpartum depression? Oh, or? yeah. Postpartum yeah. anxiety. I didn't mm-hmm. even know postpartum anxiety was a thing. Yep. Me too. All I have that. it, I think, still. 14 all years that. later. <laughs> I just so I just wanted to share my story in that because I felt like we sort of get you get us up to the pregnancy. Yeah. The birth, and then it's like, good luck. Yeah. So I have lots to share in those things. Well, <laughs> you know, kids don't let you hide anything. Yeah. So, you know, those days are over. Good thing you got it out in the book <laughs> while he's still good, you know. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. Um, so in terms of actually the writing of the book, aside from using text edit by mistake, um, did no, you... No, I wasn't using it. Oh, I was okay, using, okay. like, a different format. It was a whole thing. Did you... What was, like, your process like writing it? And I can only imagine that some of these scenes, like, to have to type them again must have been really emotional. Like, where yeah. did you... Are you at, like, a cafe? Like, give me a visual of where you no, were. No, at home um, or outside. I like to be outside in nature. That would make me feel good. Did you know you wanted to do all these chapters, these kind of like short-ish chapters and different scenes and things <sighs> no, like that? No, because I just started from the beginning. I just started writing. I just was like, well, I just told the story. And then we shaped it. Then we went into, okay, you know, um, yeah, we couldn't have a very long chapter. Let's kind of the most important parts and um yeah naming chapters and figuring out what photos I wanted to include and all of this process um but no just I mean in the beginning I was just kind of off and running and then if I felt like I needed a moment then I would stop yeah. gather myself or take that space or maybe it was like the next day yeah and you mentioned that the audiobook was emotional mm-hmm. oh yeah that I definitely had to stop um for sure, especially with KJ. Yeah, even in the editing process, it was always like right there. Do you know what's happened? I was like, like the epilogue, like the PS to this, to all these guys from mm-hmm. your past. Do you have any? Do you have tabs on where anybody is? Have you, like, do you do you follow anybody in any way or just, no? Um, no. Have I mean, they reached I'm, out to you? Um. Well, I mean, the the. Uh, negative relationships I don't know I mean I'm still friends with Sal and there are Mm -hmm. people that I'm still close with um but no I I mean I I read a really interesting um quote a statement from my second husband that I thought it was so perfectly presented on his part that I didn't have to address it at all (laughs) but other than that you know um yeah so now that you have written this book and are on your way to your second book. What advice would you give to aspiring authors? Oh, gosh. Oh, I mean, I feel so grateful that I had the right kind of people around me, um, the right kind of team that I could talk to, an amazing editor and publisher, and I feel like people that understood me, that feel, felt really wonderful. So just um, overall, I just felt like I could breathe in the way that I wanted to. And that's what I needed, right? So I think, I mean, it's so important to feel that you you don't have to hold yourself back in any way. Um, I'm not an expert, but I feel like, you know, for me to just share first and foremost, right, and then get into the rest of the process I mean that was important to feel like I had the space to be able to do that I don't think any author feels like they're an expert (laughs) just but but now you have to own it like now you're an author look at that you know it's pretty awesome I mean thank you I'm I'm yeah I am learning how to incorporate all of that it's it's hard to communicate that I know that that's weird um it's strange to understand but just the the real desire that I had behind this, you know, it was a real collaborative effort. Um, Because 
I wanted to just publish, you know, the poetry book. Well, the poems were great too, but thank you. Um, but I, but I still is... was holding myself back on sharing all of it, and so thank you for giving me credit. But it's a lot of people that went into helping me be able to share my story. But maybe that's the whole point of it. Maybe that's the answer to the question: is that this particular story is so important to get out that that's why you were sort of allowed to keep going. I don't know. Maybe that's yeah, like... Yeah, and I want to share... That's what I want to share with people, right? Because that's why I believe we're here, is to communicate with one another and hopefully learn and grow and heal, inspire one another. Well, you know, that's just my perspective. And I, I guess I just simply felt like there's... None of that will come um, if I if I don't share, you know, if, if I'm the only one that just sort of sits with this. Amazing. You know? So I didn't know, really know where it was gonna go, but I just felt so compelled to do it and hoped for the best. <laughs> so that's why I'm excited. That's awesome. Because um, this is really beautiful and I love how people are now opening up about what they've gone through. It's, um. It's a beautiful thing. It's a it's it's wonderful to experience and know I'm not alone. But yet that's so heartbreaking to realize right. that that's so commonplace. So well, you, I want to change yeah. it, right? Yeah. That's why I get excited. Well, it's hard to take on all that pain. Like don't. Yeah. That, I mean, not like you need my advice. But I would say like <laughs> keep that. Just you can't take all that on. And, no, but but it just it's. It just makes me feel like if that's the case, then I'm more than happy to be that person. If that's what it takes then to create some of these conversations and hopefully create more change, I'll be that person. And do you are you do you have any plan? I'm gonna take QA after this, but are you done with acting? You wanna keep acting? How do you feel about the role of acting in your in your No, life? I love it. I mean, I feel very blessed. I feel very grateful to be able to do what I do. Um, I was thinking about this earlier and there's been this theme of um, me playing real life people, um, sharing these true stories and um, it's, it's, it's come into my life yet again. And so I feel like there's something really beautiful about that. I'm more than happy to be that person. I've always loved um, being honest and being a truth teller. And so it's kind of like this thing where I get to do both. So I love that. That makes me very happy. I'm also, you know, working in development too. I love, you know, producing. I have a project um, that's based on this. Um, that I've been working on for a few years too, as well to develop. So that's exciting. Yeah, yeah. I love okay. all of it. You know, that would that would be wonderful. Excellent. Okay. Um, well, I know there are going to be a lot of questions. Okay. So are you ready? <laughs> yeah. I got all mine in. Most of mine. What I do you want to know? <laughs> okay. Here, uh, I have to pull this a little closer. So, okay. Lots of questions here. So aside, let me move this. Aside from your book, what is your fit? Aside from your book, what is your favorite book? Mm, I guess the first one that comes to mind um, from childhood is uh, Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next, <laughs> has motherhood triggered any past emotions from your childhood and upbringing? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yes. Um, all the time. Yeah, I talk about those in therapy. Yeah, so it's it's good. I try to stay in that space so that I can remain aware and um, you know and and be the change, right? Be for him what I felt I needed. I can't believe, by the way, that your dad was a psychiatrist in the ballroom of your house. That's like wild. Yeah. I don't know how I would feel going into therapy in a ballroom as a patient. Do you know what I mean? I feel like that might like be like, all right, where am I? But anyway. Um, okay. My friend is 41 and pregnant for the first time. Any Aww. advice? I'm so happy. That's so wonderful. Um, oh, gosh. I mean, 
so nervous. Just pretend about, you're an expert. I know, <laughs> right? Like being put in this position. Any advice? Um, oh, I mean, I think it's so important to find to have the right people around you that are going to support you and you know what you want for yourself. That's what I've learned. Um, it very much can turn into like what everyone else wants that to be. Um, so I think you really have to take care of yourself, listen to your body, listen to your own intuition, right? Um, I'm trying to think of other things that I did for myself. I mean, just try to take care of that emotional care, that spiritual care as well, and not just the physical. Do you have any products you like couldn't live without as a mom? Just wondering. Not so it much. wasn't so much about products. I just felt like... I, I needed to do a lot of work to choose who I wanted around me. Got it. That's very important, you know? And I, you really, I think especially in that time, you have to protect your energy. Yeah, yeah I'm not good at that. Okay. <laughs> do, you, do you? I'm not either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, yeah. I Hashtag try. protect no. the energy. <laughs> yeah, okay, mom. Um, do you see yourself publishing any short fiction in the future since you wrote it when you were younger? Would be so cool. I would love to. I would love to publish any of that. I still have a lot of these stories. I still have um, many, many pages of poetry. Um, there's only a few that were shared in this book, so for sure. I'd like love it. to share all of it. I like how you interspersed it in this book. Thank you. You always like mixed it up. And um, how did you survive falling from an 80 foot high cliff? 30 foot. Yeah. Okay. 30. Well, I'm reading. Okay. Without breaking. <laughs> I was a, only 30. <laughs> without breaking a bone when you were eight. Uh, I have no idea. That's what I mean. I mean, I almost lost my eye before that. Fell off 30 foot cliff. Um, Costa Rica. What else? Drugs. I was hit broadside. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. The car I mean, accident. there were the car accident. Oh yeah. I mean, there were times where I was actively um, thinking, and you know, just the process that I was in of I wonder how much I can hurt myself. So for sure, yeah. I don't know. That's what I'm. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to connect with and um, take advantage of, right? What is your favorite thing about motherhood? Mm. Possibility. Yeah. The potential. That's what's so incredible. It's like always there. That's what I try to focus on. I mean, every cry now, oh. right? There's just always a moment where we can be connected and choose better. Um, yeah, that's what I think is wonderful. I mean, aside from everything else that I couldn't even label, there's a million things, but I think that. Sounds beautiful. Are there any other ways, oops, are there any other ways you have been able to create through your pain outside of acting and now as an author? I've always tried to express myself, um, any form of art, uh, painting. Mm, I'm trying to think, I don't know, anything. I talk about when I got into pottery or any form of expression. Piano. Piano, yeah. I'll just Music. answer your question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, any any creative outlet. And that's what acting gave me. Yeah. Any way to express myself. Do you have a morning routine to center your energy and prepare for the day slash any challenges you might face? Mm, I'm developing that one now. So my son's only four and a half months. So <laughs> my sleep pattern is all over the place. And um, not yet. <laughs> I've been slowly but surely trying to get out more and walk, you know, especially like later in the day, not so much the beginning of the day. It's around now. Twilight's my favorite time of day. Um, go down by the ocean if I can. Grounding. Yeah. 
my copy of your book just arrived today. Uh, so maybe you touch on this in the book, but how is your high school experience? Did you have an influential slash supportive teacher? I'm a high school teacher, so I'm always curious if someone has a favorite teacher. I did, Mr. Cassidy, my English teacher. Um, yeah, I did. I had I had a few teachers who, like, even if I just, you know, didn't get like an A plus or it wasn't perfect, they were always just there. Um, and yeah, I just I felt their presence. I guess I felt. Um, that it was more constructive that he to take the time to talk with me, um, maybe as to why, uh, you know, I didn't get an A plus or something versus being lost in the mix. That always meant something to me because I felt that way. It was, you know, big class sizes. I went to two different high schools. I remember sitting in one class with my hand raised the entire class and not being called. So I just, you know, you just like little sort of do the work, you know, get out of here. <laughs> so of course, when there's a teacher who's actually sitting with you and talking with you and taking a moment, um, yeah, that was Mr. Cassidy. I feel like anybody who gets like really great encouragement from one teacher has a much better yeah. shot at basically everything in life. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's part of why I, is. I, I talk about in the book when I, um, you know, had like my midlife or emotional breakdown at 20 or 21 and I mm -hmm. went back to school. Yep. Part of that was because I felt like I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to prove to myself that I was smart enough that I could do that because especially at that point in my life, it felt like, oh, you know, you're a junior, you don't, know where you're going to college yet like it just I was uh, you know um, like a, a screw up because I didn't have it all figured out so that's why I went back is because I wanted to feel that sense for myself it's nice in school you always feel like you're on some sort of path <laughs> I know I feel like once I graduated I was like uh, now what okay <laughs> um, anyway what were the best tools you used to help you cope slash heal with your past really getting into therapy and I feel like that in and of itself it's so important to find the person that works for you um, this reminds me of or it makes me think about how I feel like I gave my power away a lot like there was this sense of oh well you must have this degree or like you must have this experience or you must have this you know amount of years over me in age so you must know better and so I was just consistently giving all of my power away and never listening to myself. So, I mean, there's so many tools. That's one, listen to your instinct, your intuition. That's always part of it. It's so important because, you know, that's all I did was denounce myself. That's all I did was, like, not listen to any of those signs. So that's important. Um, I think it's important to, to take space. You know, it depends on what's happening, you know. It's hard to answer in such a general way, but um, I mean, for me, in some of those moments I learned through therapy and I talk about with Seagal, learning how to apply those tools and, um, you know, have uh, apply like patience and space um, for myself, allow compassion so that I could um, move through those, maybe not react um, in, in, in a negative way or um, spontaneously, right? Those are just some of the little things I think that I would do. Stop for a moment, breathe, think about it, reassess. I feel like you could go on and on about this. I feel like you It got depends like on what's happening. A thousand you know? tools yeah. in the toolbox. No, yeah. it's great. It's I mean, amazing. Those are just some, some of them because I guess, you know, I was always like in a reactive state. No, it's yeah. great to have, um, I know, I feel like I try to teach this to my kids. Like, what are the tools <laughs> we're putting in your toolbox? You're just like, yeah, it's great. It's a it's lot amazing. and it has to work for you, yeah. you know? It's it's whatever works for you. I mean, in, in therapy, I mean, I guess one example, um, 
is because I'm, you know, I, I have, I love my therapist now. Like I, I, I had to find that person through the right referral, you know, someone that I'm friends with that I felt like, you know, we're on the same page or we've experienced things. And so that was the therapist for me. But, you know, one of the things that she um, helped me understand and we gave it a name was that personality back then that was in survival mode. And so then it was for me to understand that that person, that name or whatever that personality was, served me back then, but doesn't serve me anymore. Wouldn't it be funny if everybody went on book tour with their therapist? <laughs> right? <laughs> like you might as well like get free sessions out of this whole thing. Yeah. You know, like every time you could just, why. you know, yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know. Two birds, one stone. <laughs> um, okay, I'm not asking you to editorialize about the 2019 film you did regarding Nicole Brown Simpson, but your performance was brave, transparent, and moving. Did it inform how you thought through and wrote about yourself in the book? Not that particular project. Um, and I tried not to overthink anything. I had to feel it out on the page. Um, I know that that's like strange to answer in that way or to understand. It was just, it's like I had to allow that driving force to really come through. Let's talk about why you keep saying everything you think is strange and weird. <laughs> um, that's a good question. Just store that away. Yeah, that's for your next therapy. Because I think that it's, I think you know, there's there's certain expectations, and and it's it's it feels like a roundabout way that I went about all of this in writing a book. That's how I perceive it. There's no good way. There's no regular. <laughs> yeah. way. Okay. Do you enjoy traveling specifically to Canada? <laughs> my husband um, <laughs> yes this is from someone named my Ashley. husband's Canadian yeah of course <laughs> of course yeah um when it's warmer no I'm kidding <laughs> where do you want to go most where's like a number one on your wish list right now you have a wish list <sighs> anywhere anywhere right now not Canada here's a plane, like, here's a plane. In Canada? Canada? Um, uh the Galapagos oh yeah I've always wanted to go there it, cool. even though that's probably like counterproductive right the whole point is to like not go there. No, but <laughs> <laughs> but I want to be a human and see it. Yeah. <laughs> Just sounds incredible. Wow, yeah. such a scientist yeah. answer. Birds named boobies. Come on, yeah, it's weird. Tortoises <laughs> or whatever else. Is... Um, what advice would you give your seventeen-year-old self? <sighs> How much time? Do we have? <laughs> there's so much more I think I especially at that time and with Tyler and I talk about how I had this moment where I just felt like well all my stuff's here you know I have nowhere else to go um I would want to just communicate that there's so much more out there um and storage units too I mean. <laughs> but don't limit yourself no. that's what I did I didn't see any other options I guess I talk about this moment where I you know in the very beginning of that relationship with Tyler he's in the back room with a stripper and I speed onto the freeway can you know uh assuring myself I'll never um allow myself to be treated like that or go you know um put myself in a position like that and I clearly did oh my god the scene with you on the couch like curled up in a ball the first time mm. with Tyler but oh my gosh I mean there's so many moments like that could be the whole book, you know. Anyway, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot in there. Okay. As oh, there's some that go all the way to the top now. Uh, do you have a favorite role or film experience? By the way, I loved Bex Aww. so much. Your performance was so powerful. More people need to see it. Thank you. I have a favorite role or film. I mean, they've all meant something to me. I'm so bad with that question. Um, Cause that's just, I'm very Aquarian. That's how I see it. Like they all just meant something to me wherever I was at in my life. I could, I could tell you what that meant, you know, for all of them. Um, that's how I see it. They all were the, the biggest gift and allowed me to grow in, in the way that I needed to. So it's very diplomatic. No, th like but it's true. They no, all kidding, mean something to me. And depending on, I mean, when I worked on, Six Feet Under, I've talked about this, when Alan Ball came to me and, um, you know, 
with this character Edie, who is a performance artist, and um, that was absolutely terrifying for me. Uh, I was absolutely terrified to even consider a role like that, but I pushed myself to do it, and it brought me to a new space within myself that I that I needed to be, I you know that I needed that challenge. That's just one example. As a parent, how might you steer your child from the path you endured and what should those who were in a position to help you have what should those who were in a position to help you have done differently? Oh well. Well, I don't want to harp on like what someone should have done. I mean, cuz I just wanted to present myself. Um, but I I think what I would like to do is it, I just feel that it's important to always be present. I want him to know that I'm always there. I want him to know that he could talk to me about anything and that there won't be a judgment or, I don't know. I want him to just know that that feeling is there. I felt like it was just that process of, um, I don't know, of uh, destruction. I felt like no one would really listen or care, so I didn't reach out. So I, I didn't want him to feel that way. Um, okay. In what ways have you, and we're, I think this is the last question, maybe. Yeah. In what ways have you prepared yourself to cope with sharing your journey? Wow. Doing the work. <laughs> How do I prepare myself? I try not to think about it too much. I try to listen. I try to follow what I feel like I need to do without overthinking it. Did that make so much sense? No, it was so weird. <laughs> I was going to say, or is that weird or strange? It's so weird. Because that's what I do. That's the whole point of, I think, what I'm trying to communicate. I was so stuck in that mentality of holding myself back, of overthinking it. Okay, I think you got, oh wait, last question. Okay, considering you're a serious award-winning actor, would you consider doing reality TV? I mean. <laughs> Left field, here you go. <laughs> I guess I would have to say that I think what I love so much about where we're at is that we don't, I don't, it seems like we don't have those lines of delineation anymore, those boundaries, and I enjoy this moment, I feel like, um, and I try to communicate that in the book, is that from, you know, where I came up in, it was this, um, you know, oh, well, I'm, I work in film and I don't do television and, you know, there wasn't this crossover and I, and I never saw it like that back then. And so I feel like it's, it's, um, I'm enjoying this time now because I feel like it's truly about like the messages that we need to get across. It's not so much about like, the form that it comes in. Um, so depends on what it is, right? And what we're hopefully addressing and need to talk about. That's the point to me. This is like reality TV right now. Yeah. This is reality. Let's make it. <laughs> it's like it's a therapy session. So yeah. <laughs> in treatment. A riff on in treatment or something. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, well, Mina, thank you for, well, first of all, for your book, of course, and for sharing, your, bearing your soul in the book and for discussing it. And thanks to Book Soup for having us. I love Book Soup, and this has been such a thrill. Me um, too. Thanks to everybody for watching. Me too. It's so special. I love Book Soup. I know what you've talked about and the space meaning to you, and it's so special and so incredible here, and I'm so happy that we still have this beautiful place to go to. And, magical and I can't believe I'm a part of it now so I can't believe that I'm when I moved to LA when I was 21 I was like alone browsing in book soup and like watching movies with you and now here we are <laughs> here we are like on book soup hanging out it's just so funny life yeah. is crazy life yeah. is crazy I'm just gonna say life is funny yeah life is weird life is weird yeah that's the word of the day <laughs> <laughs> thank you both
so much for such a beautiful conversation. And I love to hear your history with Book Soup. That's amazing. So thank you for sharing that. And thank you so much for having your launch with us. And congratulations, Mina, on your book. And for having I'm, me. I'm excited to read it and looking forward to more and some short fiction. I asked a short fiction question because that really intrigued me. <laughs> that would be really fun to read. So looking forward to more from you. And Zibi, thank you so much for being with us moderating. And everyone, thank you at home for watching. And please get your copy of The Great Peace at the green button. I also shared it in the chat area, so you can find it there as well. And I shared Zippy's book again, too. So thank you, everyone, and take care and have a wonderful rest of your evening.